This week's all new episode of Legends of Tomorrow was called Night of the Hawk, and it finds our time traveling heroes in 1950s America. And in case you forgot, the show stops every 10 seconds to remind you hey, look, drag races, hey, look, greasers, hey, look, rock music, hey, look, nth metal meteorites. Okay, that last one isn't exactly normal. The team, now down a member after the events of last week, decide to split up and discover how Vandal Savage is connected to a series of strange murders in the small town of Harmony Falls. And you know what? A smaller team proves to be a blessing as for once no one feels like the odd one out. First up, we have Adam and Hot Girl attempting to play house in suburbia and confront the stigma of being a mixed race couple at a time and place when yeah, no one was really cool with that. Also, for Ray and Kendra, playing couple comes at a major time in their own romantic relationship, which is pretty interesting. But oh, wait, what's that? Vandal Savage is their next door neighbor and he's invited them to a dinner party. Can they keep their cover or will he sniff them out? You really gotta give major credit to Casper Crump portrayal of Vandal, he finds new and interesting ways to play the same guy in almost every episode, depending on what time period we find him in and what social mask he's wearing at the time. I do love this Leave It to Beaver version of Vandal Savage, I thought it was pretty funny. Then of course there's White Canary and Dr. Stein who infiltrate the local madhouse, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I liked a storyline White Canary was in. Yeah, her thing mainly deals with getting too close to a nurse and having her emotions stirred up for the first time since returning from the dead. It's good stuff, and for once I felt like I wasn't, you know, left hanging or didn't have any necessary information from not watching Arrow. Then there's Rip and Cold, who get to play dress-up as FBI agents this episode. Their story is by far the shortest, and once again, Cold takes center stage as now the teen, but mainly Jax, wonder if they can trust a man who would so easily ice his own best friend. FYI, I don't think Heatwave is really dead, just missing with the option to come back. And lastly, we have the youthful Jax investigating all the hip young people by by trying to get close to the girlfriend of one of the greasers who went missing. It's a little weird that the girlfriend who's been through a traumatic event more or less just throws herself at Jax. Yeah, a little, little weird, a little icky. Now, as you may have caught on, Night of the Hawk for once in Legends manages to use time travel to actually make a statement on the era and culture that they're in. Our heroes end up facing cultural roadblocks built around their race, gender, and orientation. Yeah, it's all very on the nose and very cleaned up for CW audiences, but you know what? It's something, and I'll always take something over nothing. For my money, this stuff worked. The cherry on the cake, however, was Vandal's army of hawk monsters. I like this idea that in the 1950s, Vandal is still learning about his powers and their connection to the nth metal, and making these monsters was just kind of a happy accident for him. The hawks themselves look pretty damn good and fit the whole 50s monster movie vibe this episode had going for. This also means that for once, the team has some people to fight who are almost on their level, which is always good. After a very bumpy start, I dare say Legends has turned the corner and uh, managed to deliver on its first truly exemplary episode. It had a great pace, everyone felt useful, the time period and backdrop informed the story, there was good action, good comedy, and characters acted in character. I give this one a very positive 8 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll feel like checking out some more videos I have on offer here at Cape Jewel.